This is the John Hallett Podcast with John Hallett. It's because the way we're living, we need to change it, make a change today, and all business. learn from failure. Maybe they just wanted it a little bit more than you. That's probably the fact. And now your host, John Hallett. Hey, everybody. It's John, and I've got Josh here with me today. How are you guys doing? Thanks for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. Um, Today, I think I'm aggravated because I found a new podcast, uh, The Sean Ryan Show, and I am listening to episode 58, the first one. Um, These guys, Buck Saxon is a former CIA analyst and currently an American radio host. Um, They're just talking, um, you know, just how radical the left is and... You know, I feel like I'm really in the middle and, you know, as a business owner, you're always afraid to talk about these things. And I think it was middle of COVID when I told my wife, um, I'm opening back up because I've worked my butt off to establish this. I'm not letting, uh, this thing destroy what I've built and have it go down. And, you know, I'm just seeing just so much stuff out there that I think is just really radical. And I just, I'm tired of it, really tired of it. Um, A couple guys that I know, and right, I don't always agree with everybody. And, you know, I don't, sometimes I think the far right, you know, needs to come to the middle. You know, we just all need to get along and find a way to coexist and let people be free, I think, and do their own thing. It's only when they're harming, especially children, that aggravates me. Um, but my guys, <laughs> they're, hey, John, you're really quiet in this conversation. And I'm like, I'm just sick of it. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Um, I don't know what to do. I'm frustrated and just talking and going round and round. Doesn't seem like the answer. Maybe talking it on it here. I don't know. As a business owner, I certainly certainly can't run for, you know, even school committee and try to change what's going on and being taught to our kids, let alone um, what happens in major universities. I think it's just crazy. Um, My daughter is a senior and, you know, looking at colleges and part of me is really afraid of just, it's just so one-sided people. You know, I have friends that um, are on either side. I just, it's just one-sided. It's got to be an education. When it's one-sided, that's not an education, people. And that's what I, I see in major universities. It's just crazy. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Josh? Welcome back, my faithful friend. Sweating cool. in my ear today, grappling. That's Oh, awesome. man. That, no, that's awful. <laughs> it. Well, I got a haircut because I was tired of being a shaggy dog out there. And let's let's be honest. And well, you're welcome for the sweat, by the way. You know, with with all of it. First off, on the kids' side of it, kids um, kids don't know anything, right? But for the most yeah. part, like kids, when you look at human development, and I've taken some human development classes thanks to my degree, you know, kids aren't even thinking about reproduction, right? They're 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 still formulating who they are as a person, their their self identity. Society has like these rules for it that we assign, but it seems like this, this woke push is just trying to go, not just counterculture, but completely opposite of what, like the current thinking amongst people who, who aren't on that side, you know what I mean? And I just don't think that we should keep parents out of the choices, right? I mean, the left's really big about choice, but when you don't give parents a choice about how, you know, if you're doing those kind of transition things and you, you're, you're at the school and you're not telling your parents what choice did the parents get in that, right? And why do the schools need to think they need to keep those things secret? You know what I mean? There's yeah. so much going on here that I have a hard time. And, you know, I used to be part of old political shows. People people know that I've probably got a background in that. They probably already know where I sit on some of this stuff, but it it's just it's just too much for me. They're, they're telling me I have to accept somebody else's choice. And I don't have to accept any choice I don't want. That's yeah, the my job of the school system is to educate yeah. the kids on reading, math, writing, not what they're doing. Um, it's crazy and just polluting. Like you get these teachers polluting with their own ideas, and that's great. You want to create a club? 
after school and people sign you up for it, uh, you know, absolutely great. Go ahead. Like I like different ideas from different people. It's great. But, you know, and I find myself in the middle of so much. Yeah. And, and I've told conservative friends, I'm like, dude, give it up. Like, it's a woman's right for an abortion. Give it up. Yeah, is there a fine line when you get into nine months and I go a little bit, well, how dumb are you? You didn't see this coming? Yeah. And I know there's so situations and other things, but, yeah. but a little bit, I'm like, uh, I'm not a woman. I don't yeah. know. But you're like, you haven't had your period. Like, can you go to the doctor? I don't know. I'm yeah. a little bit like, how dumb are you? I've never been in that situation, so I can't really formulate uh, an opinion. You know, yeah, I, I, I'm not there. I can't. My glasses are dirty, and you're ugly as it is, Josh. We've been saying that that joke to each other all week. So. <laughs> it just, I don't know, man. It just feels like the world's just trying to go not backwards, but in the opposite direction. Like there, there's just so much going on. It's like people are, someone out there is trying to pit us all against each other. That's yes, what it's I like mean, you me. saw that. I'm like. People in power, you know, it. they want more power. They want all of it. You know, power is a dangerous thing. Yeah. I don't think anybody should be in power for that long. And that's really what is happening here. They take total control and things just disappear. Hunter Biden's laptop. Well, that's not Hillary Clinton. Uh, like all this stuff just disappears. And I'm like, if you mess up, you should go to jail. Like, there should be a penalty for the things that have gone wrong. Mm -hmm. And that we can just, you know, so to speak, just uh, just brush that underneath the table. We won't talk about it. And there's just so much control. Facebook, yeah. Instagram, you yeah. know, we're talking about it a bit on um, the Sean Ryan show. They have so much control. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Never mind... The major media channels, um, the major newspapers, that there's just so much control. And I really feel like we need, just, you know, I hate to say government run, but we need an unbiased place for people to get the truth. And that's crazy. Like, hey, I just want the truth, not your spin. I just want the truth and I can figure out on my own, what I want to decide. And that's getting even scarier with our friend ChatGPT and mm -hmm. all this AI stuff that they're going to be manipulating everything and you're going to see a video that's me saying, hey, I think we should sexualize children and it's yeah, their choice at thinks. seven years old. Which I didn't, I mean, gosh, I mean, I like girls from an early age, but... You still don't have things figured out. I mean... You don't know who you are. I mean, you get to 40s I mean, and you're still figuring stuff out. I don't I tell my daughter and kids, I'm like, I, you know, every five years to 10 years, I kind of have this, wow, man, I thought I knew what I was doing when I was 30. Or, you know, right. You know, like, God, when I was 20, you know, what I thought, it's just crazy to be making life-altering decisions. Is it even a parent helping the, like... They're a child. They can't even go out and buy a drink. They can't even vote. Yeah. All this other stuff. They can't but we're going to make them alter their lives. So let me ask you this question then. Where does the, you know, when you're 18, well, under 18, you are your parents' responsibility, right? If your kid makes major problems, you, yeah. you have to pay for it, or civilly, you're the one that's in charge for them, right? There's even certain instances where a parent gets charged if their kid does something, right? But yeah. then the state says that the parents aren't involved with other decisions. So where do they draw that line? What, you know what I mean is the, is the, where does one become an adult, right? Yeah, to make that decision? Sure. Yeah, certainly hard, right? Certainly, you know, a big discussion there. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, I guess it's 18 and... It's the legal definition, right? You know, maybe, you know, you're like 21 when you can drink and, you know, when's the, what do they say, the frontal lobe... 
is fully developed. Well, it starts it's, to fully develop at 25 in males. It's a little earlier in women because yeah. so I mean, is that when, when you're like, hey, when your brain is fully formed, like, do you say something at that point? Which God, that's so long. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I'm not. I and I, I have gay friends. Yeah, like yeah. I don't care. I really don't. Long as you're happy and you're not hurting children. And you're not forcing your agenda on me. Mm, that's the, the crux of it, right? You know, I'm like, do you know, do whatever you want, be whoever you want to be, however you feel. If that's how you feel, I can't question that. But you know, I don't want you to destroy your life yeah. too soon. So I mean I say between eighteen and twenty five and then hey dude, you were eighteen and you made a bad decision. Mm-hmm. And you're going to have to live with it now. I mean, you, whatever, we're selling drugs, whatever. You were right. drinking and driving. You, you may, you, you're you going to have to pay for that mistake. And maybe it's not, maybe it is. But that's for you, and now you have to live with it. But yeah. under 18, I mean, gosh, like, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. They're still my like, kids. I mean, I don't have them. They're your kids, right? They're your kids kids the state says they're your kids if you do not take care of them they'll take them away yeah so they're your kids right i mean it so you should be the one in charge of those decisions and, and talking about like making those choices or, and, and dealing with them there was a woman who transitioned to male she had this great article that i was reading on msn she realized that men start going bald because the moment she started transitioning she started losing her hair male pattern huh. baldness right because the hormones Genetically, she was predisposition, and his new um, his statement on it was, "Is I didn't sign up for this, right? You don't realize that if somebody transitions, you also get all the stuff that, that the other side deals with, the male pattern baldness, the you know maybe menopause down the road because we don't know the long term effects yeah, the of long these term effects of this, and right? How's that going to affect you later in life? How's this going to affect you hormonally? What you know, cancers." How's that going to change yeah, everything? It is so. messing with your biology. Yeah. Right? Like, you're doing yeah. something. I mean, they even say, like, I'm not doing it again. Like, I'm not neutering or spading uh, another dog. Um, I think there's, like, health things for those dogs. And people, like, friend, like oh, I'm like, they're not running around crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah, maybe it was a problem. I don't know when. What in the fifties? People just running around, like take care of your dog. But I'm like, that's more like ownership. Like these dogs are just running around, and there's, you know, we have an overpopulation of dogs. We, you know, you gotta neuter and spay the dogs. Yeah. So I know. don't see dog. Dogs aren't running around my neighborhood. I don't see, you know. Yeah. That type of stuff. That's not really going around now. Maybe if you're in the country, but you know, I feel like Country Joe is gonna shoot your dog. Because it's on your property, you're going to eat my chickens or something. Dude, I read another crazy article. A, uh, I think it was a Denmark team transplanted a uterus into a, another woman, and they used kind of a robot to do it. But what they learned from their research was, and their quote was, anyone, anyone that wants a uterus, they can give it to them. Yeah, I mean, science is crazy. Isn't that wild? I mean, yeah. so there could be this point where people, like, fully transition and would it be indistinguishable so what kind of psychological things come with that i mean you know how yeah only time will tell <laughs> i don't know there's so much to it and, and there's so many what ifs I mean, we have to yeah they're it's jumping like head first into it. that is out there like what's yeah. the right decision you yeah. know is electric cars the right decision yeah but i feel like that's being shoved down our throats uh, hey i i love nature me too and I don't want to see our planet polluted and the ozone and all that stuff. And it's a real concern, you know, to say it's not happening. The data is there. You look at stuff. There's some great stuff with Elon Musk on it. And you're just like, but what is the batteries going to be causing a problem? Right. I mean, you know, what's the, what's the right? Can we just not force an agenda down our throats? And can we all just make a decision? Um, that's based on science and no. not just whatever we think. Uh, hey, I'm gonna, I've got a uh, battery factory, I've got a solar farm. We're gonna make money on this 
and it fits a narrative, you know. Yeah. Um, oil is bad, you know. There's kind of like oil. <laughs> You know, I don't know, like, what's the right thing? I mean, those ca cars are certainly fast, and yeah, oh yeah, yeah that's cool. instant I mean, torque. I think it's fun, but it's is it the right decision long term? And I always say, I'm like, I don't know if I've said it on this podcast, but I say it to my wife because we're actually um, up um, cleaning our VRBO. Yeah, um, it had been sitting empty a little bit here and that slush mush whatever they call it up there um mud season where nobody wants to be up in the mountains and mm -hmm. uh it's kind of been extended this year so we we're up there yeah, dusting right. and did a great six seven mile hike and uh we we're i'm like i'm gonna need a coffee before we hit the road <laughs> i'm yeah. like let's get a coffee starbucks was closed by the way i don't like starbucks they burn your americano every time what do you mean burn they put too much hot water in it, like nice crema. Like I'll show you the next time, Ross. Send a picture. John loves his coffee. If you guys like, did not know, he loves. You've got to have like crema. Even Dasbog, there used to be a guy that worked. I mean, this is going to be like over eight years ago at Dasbog. Yeah. That guy could make a freaking americano. Um, but most of these people burn americanos. They they don't do a good job. Should have a nice crema on the top of it. A nice golden brown. That's what he's but, uh, Okay. They were closed. I'm like, what? They're closed? Uh, so, you know, we just had to go up, uh, go into King Supers, but they had Tesla charging stations at the Starbucks there. My wife's like, oh, there's some charging stations, stations. in Silverthorne. We haven't really seen it. Maybe there was one at Stupid sure. Target. Um, but I was like, wait, wait. Until they start charging you, wait oh, until yeah. they wait. You electric car owners, I'm like, hey, I think it's cool. I think it's great. It's still energy. It's still coming from somewhere. Right. People like when you're charging at your house, where is that power coming from? How did they get it? Was it coal? What was it? Let's try to be as clean as we can. Freaking never mind China and India that you know Just are the biggest polluters out, right. out there, but. Wait until they start charging you, and oh, are people going to be in up in arms? Oh, yeah. Come well, back to whatever point in this, and I said it. John Hallett said, like, wait until those people are up in arms when those charging stations, can you imagine the line? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And how many, I mean, are they going to improve? Of course, that Elon will improve that technology, I'm sure, sure over time. Switch out a battery or something, yeah. But my mother-in-law was looking at um, an electric car, and you know, I don't think we taught me, we talked about it in the podcast, but um, her house was destroyed in the, la in the oh, hurricane right. yeah. down there on Sanibel Island, and her concern was, uh, what if I'm stuck evacuating? Yeah, and I don't have power. There's more gas stations, like, of course I can run out of gas, but there's more gas stations than there are charging stations. By far. But I'm still, you know, like, either way, be prepared. <laughs> yeah. Be prepared. You know, do you have a Sawyer Mini? Can you filter water? Right. What can you do? Be prepared. But so many people aren't prepared. No. No. They're, they don't take the precautions. I'm sure now I'm like, now I'm going to have to, you know, she'll probably be like, this is the dumbest thing you've gotten me, John, for Christmas. But maybe, like, maybe that's a good, get her a little mini, um, survival kit to throw yep. in her car um if she needs to evacuate that she can at least have you know some emer emergency food Power. rations yeah she could do some basic things actually there is a youtube channel i follow and actually the guy does a thing he does that for his mom yeah, yeah. What is his channel? He's pretty good. So I'd give him a, a lot of Tesla him. owners have been putting trailers behind their Tesla and having a, uh, a generator on the back. And then that leads to a charge station so they can charge it on, not the go, but like in other like places, getting right? getting out of there. But you, you right, to go. exactly. Because there's sometimes, those, you know, because Tesla will give you these maps and it will take you from charging station to charging station. Yeah. But sometimes you got to stop for like an hour, hour and a half at yeah. each one of these places. Yeah. So you lose a lot Meanwhile, of travel time. Right, the, uh, here everybody. come the thugs. Are you prepared? Do you know how to defend yourself? 
Here right. they come. Here they come. Here they come. So join Rocky Mountain Self Defense and Fitness today. Don't worry, Citizen Defender, Croft Look On. We even have a wonderful um, fitness pillar. So come on in. That was a free plug for the, the gym, even though they're the sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to charge myself. That's right. how you make a ton of money, right. Josh, in business, right? I'm just yeah. going to charge myself for advertising. Right. All of a sudden, I got a ton of freaking money. Yeah, I did. Yeah, you I didn't mute phone the again. phone. I know. I feel like that's your job. You didn't remind me. Yeah, well, you should know. Hey, so Mazda, so they're, they're trying to come up with a uh, an industry disruptor because a lot of the government language says that it has to be a zero emission car. So they're about to introduce a hydrogen-based engine that is just as efficient. It'll have the same power as like a gas power. You won't have that instantaneous torque from a battery that you would see. But the uh, the exhaust is water vapor. Pure water vapor. That's awesome. And you're going to be able to refuel hydrogen. You know, as quick as you put the tube in there, it's going to inject the uh, the liquid hydrogen, pull the hose out, and you're on the road again. So all these people that are investing in battery-based companies, I'm sure Tesla freaks out about this. These hydrogen cars, I think Mazda is going to really, they're going to have something, right? Because everybody wants a, a more clean car. But what if you had a more clean car that, that works just like a gas-powered vehicle? And some vehicles, I think, can actually be transferred over to hydrogen if, if such a thing happened. But there's no push for that. There's just like this major push on batteries and electricity. It has to be electric. Well, now like, people have invested in it. Now yeah. this is the narrative. Instead of going, hey guys, whoa, 360, this guy's got better technology and yeah. this is cleaner. This is not going to be doing the, the harm to the earth to create these batteries. You know, there's pros and cons to everything. And yeah. I feel like people aren't going to change. And I think you have to. Um, yeah, you have to. So, yeah, you could get one. I've been looking actually because. You know, giving up a pickup truck. I've been wanting a pickup truck again, but I love my Jeep. Yeah, your Jeep's but, pretty nice. It, yeah, it's great. You know, it's not it's not a pickup truck. You want a bad? I was like, maybe I'll get a trailer. And I've been looking at it. But God, you look at these trailers. I mean, oh my goodness. there's one like apocalypse rated off-road trailers. Yeah, I <laughs> There's some like yes, yes. Mammoth Overland. Like there's some great things out there. And you're like, I just found another one. Then I was like, all right, these trailers are like five to ten thousand dollars, and God, you start to spend a ton of money just on a trailer. Like, yeah, the five to ten thousand dollars, like the low end of it, right? Because I've looked at it, and I'm like, just to get into it is like seven thousand bucks for something that you'd really want, right? Okay, there's one I found. <sighs> They're I'm awesome looking for that other video, but um, it's a place here in Colorado. There's tons. Down the street. Is, what's the company in Colorado? Oh, um, Colorado. Uh, they're right down on. Um, I don't remember their name now, but there is a place that's local. That does do those things. They make a really nice trailer. Problem is, again, you know, you get what you pay for. They're really nice, but they also have a premium attached to it. So one of them I looked at was ten thousand, ten thousand, ten five, I think, is what it was. And I'm like, man, I'd have to use that a lot to get all the the value out of it. But boy, it'd be yeah, cool just to be able to like, hook it up to the truck and and just be gone, right? You just go. Yeah. At a moment's notice, and I, I really want one, but I just don't think it's. I don't think it's a smart buy right now. No. I'm like, how much am I going to use this thing? Like exactly. Four times a year. Is it cool? Yeah, I could totally apocalypse. Right. And <laughs> if you just trailer, but you're like, geez, $34,000? For I'm some like, of those, yeah. And I'm then like, if you finance it now, you got an 8% loan. It's not, you know, the day of those 2% loans or any of those car things are gone. 8% on a $30,000 trailer now? Yeah. Or like a $50,000 car. Did you know like uh, the Dodge Ram 1500, some of them are going for $75,000? Yeah. A pickup I, truck. I, I love Dodge Rams. I used to own one. It was twenty grand back in 2011, right? Now, for the higher-end ones, it, it's even more. Or like a Ford Raptor anything starts at $80,000. Yeah. Ford Bronco I mean, makes the... The uh, the Dodge looked like wow that's a steal okay right that's a steal but what if you're a business owner and you need big trucks right you, you then you have to go to the used market and that drives up all those prices and it, you know this whole environmental push just ends up costing us a whole bunch of money but I still want to save everything right I like my open spaces I like the wetlands I like hiking and camping and all that stuff so and then we just go at each other's throats about the whole thing 
you know? Yeah, I mean... It's just a whole bunch of crap. It's just a whole bunch of bull stuff. <laughs> yeah, it just it's, is. It's bullshit, How much dude. do you need? Yeah, you're right. like, how much do you really need? Um, but, yeah, there's pros and cons to everything. The Jeep's awesome. You can get so many yeah. places um, that a pickup truck just can't. You can get away. That's what I like when I camp. I just want to get away from people and, you know, get away from even just those pickup trucks. <laughs> Yeah. Where they can get, you can get a little bit further. I like to be away. You know, like it's like the worst thing of like camping and then you get these people partying next to you. Like I just want nature. Right. I've had like instances where police show up and you know somebody's running towards my tent at one of those events and I hear somebody yell, Don't tease me, don't tease me, and then they hit him. Right? And I'm sitting there in my tent like Please don't come towards me. You know, I, I don't want to deal but that's what you get a campground. That's why you want to go out in the gym. Yeah, that's why I you get want it. to go. You've been just I mean even just some of the designated yeah. camping areas. I'm actually um, being at the Great Sand Dunes. Um, those camp spot. Well, they had the camping. Like, oh, there's like the you know asphalt, and you can pull up your uh, yeah. fifth wheel. But once you go down the road, those spots were pretty far apart, mm -hmm. which was kind of nice. Like in between, if you were gonna, you know, be out. That was nice, but then you're like, oh, wait a second. <laughs> yeah. These are all full. These are all full. So, the you know, there was a spot where, you know, there's pickup trucks going, I can't get past this. And I'm like, well, I have no place to camp behind me, so I'm going to go forward, and the Jeep's going to make it through this nasty yeah. spot in the road yeah. where the pickup truck, you know, can't. So, I mean, headed a winch, then, you know, probably good. Yeah. But you know, when those trails narrow, like... Your car is getting scratched, so yeah, they do. And I bought my truck just because I want to do the overlanding in it. And all it did is it ended up turning into like just a normal truck again because I ended up hauling so much stuff. Because the moment I turn it into an overlander, I can't haul anything with it anymore. You know yeah. what I mean? Because it's full of sleeping stuff and all that. And it's it's like, well, how much how much do I want to invest in that? Yeah, I mean, I like my tent. You're like, oh, my tent is just fine. Do I need this thing on the top of my Jeep? And I see people hauling that stuff around. I'm like, every day? You got a tent on the top of your thing every day. The gas mileage alone was just <laughs> like, tanking for the year, right? I'm like, how? Oh, I guess that's a real pain in the neck to take off that you just leave it up there year round. I'm like, hey, you're ready to get out of there, but hey, my tent, and I can, I got a tarp and I can create a shelter, so. Not too worried about having this, you know. I don't really like the glamping. That's I like. You're not really. Camping. Hey, listen. I've lived in a tent for months at a time on Indian reservation. I have. I've. I've lived camping for a long time, and after a while, I'm like, man, I love running water. <laughs> you know, I love a soft bed. You know. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's kind of a little bit. I guess we never really, a lot of the times, have a topic on this show, but. People, I just don't know what we're doing here. Yeah. Um, and I kind of, you know, look at some of my family and I love them, but I'm like, are you guys really for this? Like, we're going to see them all over the 4th of July. And I'm like, are you really, because voting Democrat and voting left, you're really saying you're for sexualizing kids. Wow, that's, that's really what you're saying. It's a strong That's statement. just one thing. I mean, is it not? Because the Biden administration, that's what they're pushing right now. So you're saying you're for that one thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't, hey, I don't know how to say it. I, yeah. I am good at fighting. I'm good at motivating people. Um, and that was actually something they said in the Sean Ryan. So the left is better <laughs> at communicating their agenda. Absolutely. And... And just the way they phrase it, you're like, and I've been saying this for years, and like, what? This whole politically correct crap that started, I'm like, what? This is freaking nonsense. Uh, and now, I, I wish we could go back to the early 2000s, because you're like, wow, that was easy. Yeah, I But think now it's just gotten so extreme Yeah. that... I just cannot see that, like, they're just so radical. I'm here going, I don't care what you call me, I'm 2A, I'm pro-abortion, what the hell do you call me, Josh? What is, what do you call me? I don't know, you're... Besides, you call me a jerk every day. I called you ugly once, too, and then... You called me skinny. 
I did call you skinny. I didn't like, dude. No, you you have you're like yeah. an upside down you triangle. You know how much that you're hurts. You're all that stuff, and you're like, do you know how much that hurts? I don't I because I've never been skinny. Guy. I have muscle. That is hurtful. I, have I don't too. identify as skinny. <laughs> I don't identify as skinny. He was he was you angry. Know, he was shooting hurtful. a video. I'm like, dude, you're skinny, and he just stared at me for like a moment. I was like, what did I say? I'm gonna kill you. What did I do? <laughs> That's like calling that's somebody like some, fat. <laughs> that's like, <laughs> I was like, what, dude? What are you talking about? It is. That's hurtful. People kill for I your... work. Whatever. I work out. I have muscle. And you're saying skinny? Skinny. Oh, what do you want me to say to you? Like, oh, hey, John, you're buff. Then you'd be um, like, dude, why are you calling me buff? Hey. You would. You would. You no, know it. What, well, I'm going to make fun of you whatever you say to me. Yeah, I know. I mean, you're like, just... hey, dude, you're pretty jacked. Like, you're pretty narrow in the waist. Upside down train. Your lats are big. <laughs> oh, what was... What were oh, you know what else is big on you? Your ego. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hear that one later. It's just, But everybody just wants to argue about everything. And it's like... We're, we, we, and it's in everything. It's in the media. And if, you know, we were called... A lot of people were called, like, conspiracy theorists because they were kind of pointing this thing out years ago. And they're like, no, that's never going to happen. You're wrong. And then they suppress the information. And then, you know, it starts coming true. And then, you know, just social media was pushing agendas. And there's no, like, public place to talk. It's all yeah. agenda-based. I think Twitter's getting better now that Elon Musk is kind of changing things up. they very guilty before. Oh, yeah. I mean, that whole... It's all this stuff. I mean, they're feeding the agenda... They're they're silencing one side, free speech. Like they have so much control. That's the scary thing. Yeah, they have so much control. It's scary. We need unbiased, like where you can just get the information. And I told you I was watching. I guess it was sixty minutes. I could be wrong. We had it on on Sunday. Yeah, and they were talking about Facebook and Instagram feeding teenage girls basically anorexic style diets like I was half listening but I'm like I get yes like one out of three teenage girls I'm like wait a second you're messing with kids you're done I'm like you're done that's crazy like you and your stupid algorithms and feeding people and see how the conservatives gonna react when you just feed them negative or BS stuff Okay, that's terrible. You know, you're feeding whoever. I don't care. You know, I used. You know, I know that they would really mess with conservatives, and they get all freaking. Ah. But you know, like, dude, is that a real post? You know, I'm like, watch the whole thing. You can't believe what the heck you see. So stop getting riled up. What you saw on stupid Facebook. Yeah. But that's crazy. You're feeding kids stuff, and it's still. There's a video, I guess it was on Instagram, yeah. that they had the parents and they were like, um, it was like a prank suicide, I guess it was. Bulls. That's and that girl actually hung herself. By accident? She, that's what I got out of what she did, was she was copying this trending thing, right, of like, it's still evidently out there. I, I believe. I don't know if they've now... I mean, now it's probably off because 60 Minutes had it on there. But you're like, yet yeah, you can find this stuff, but they hide other things. But you're messing with kids. So you're right there, I'm like, you've just lost all credibility with me. That you're messing with kids, but you're going to change this story and label it fake news. Can we just please get an un... Let, let people decide. Left and right, give them the facts. It's just, I mean, now with AI, it's I cannot stand it. I'm like, what are we going to do? We're coming up here in election season, and I feel like the left agenda is just, it's just so radical. Yes. It is not it's John F. Kennedy. Top. It's not. No. Um, I don't. I, Which I, is why know. I like RFK. I, I've actually met RFK, and I've talked to him. Like okay. I've hosted him on other shows, and the guy is like, I would not want to say vote Democrat, but if anybody had to vote Democrat, he's probably not a bad choice. Yeah. Because, you know, even his statement, I've talked to him personally, and he's like, the Second Amendment's absolute. You never you never hear that from a Democrat, right? Yeah. Never. 
and he was the first to go after the vaccines and all that stuff that you know ended up being the stuff that he said was true was and it's i'm not saying go vote for him but look for new leaders and i think is what i'm trying to say here right People yeah, that get I, mean, it. Uh, people I think we get should it. drain them all out. I think you shouldn't. I've said it before. You you can't be a career politician because you're just in there and you just become corrupt. Like get the heck, get in and get out. Serve your country. Well, make sure things are running smoothly and friggin' balance your friggin' budget. Budget, right? I have to do it every month. Why are you still spending my taxpayer dollars? That one's really starting to get me angry is the whole yeah. trillions of dollars in debt. Yeah, like, you guys are just screwed. Like, how much debt are we in? Cut it out. There's do your, your job and oh, get out. Debt's slavery. Because you're getting richer and the country's more in debt. Right. I don't think it. I think all these people should just be washed out after eight years of political service. Get them out. Get new people in there. It's just ridiculous. I don't know. Like our political system's real. I mean, the stuff that's going on is crazy. I mean, I really yeah. strongly, you know, encourage you to listen to that Sean Ryan episode number fifty-eight, and listen to these guys that were, you know, CIA analysts that yeah. trying to uncover what's going on is crazy. People, um, our government and the things that are going along here just to further i mean i don't think trump is probably not you no know, talk about ego um do i think he's the best guy no but i think he can run a business and it, you know nobody's perfect but they just what what they're doing there just for their agenda is crazy and changing and pushing a narrative versus the truth and where do people find the truth? Yeah. Right where before election, they? everybody on the right will sit there and tear each other up in the primaries and say, you're a horrible human being. And then when it comes to the vote, time to vote, the left just sits there and grabs all those headlines. Even Ron DeSantis said that Donald Trump, Donald Trump is evil, right? Or something. So, yeah, it's, it's I politics. I think it's an ugly game. I don't like that there's a ton of politicians that become, you know, go in poor but come out millionaires. Clintons were the perfect example. They were, they were in trouble financially. And then he became president, and now they're doing okay. Yeah. Um, Nancy Pelosi. It's crazy, and there's stuff going on. Like, um, I think they talked about it on that podcast uh, yeah. of the Clinton Foundation was re <laughs> like, they were doing some sketchy stuff there. I f can't remember uh, everything, but they talk about it on that, and you're just like, wait a second here. Why are we... Why, are why can this stuff go on? Why are politicians getting rich? Yeah. Why? Is Why the, I thought their whole richer? point was to serve us. Yeah. And to serve our country and our people. But And again, I, I think you should be in jail or worse. But you know, somebody said to me, like, where does it stop? I'm like, hey, you're messing with kids. I, I think you should be given the death penalty for messing with children. And they're like, whoa, but where does it stop? It just goes up and up. And I'm like, yes, where does it stop? Well, there needs to be laws, but like, hey, a lot of people are going to stop that crap if there's a real penalty. But yes, I mean, it's a slippery slope to say that's the, you know, that the punishment is execution. But there are like, you're guilty. And of course, they can always fabricate everything these days. Yeah, everything's a slippery slope. That's why we need smart people and uncorrupt people in there that aren't trying to, you know, create laws, create situations and wars that are going to just fit their agenda and their pocketbook. It's yeah. scary to me, um, but I'm really scared that if we have another four years of the Biden administration, I don't, I mean, this is far left. I mean, people like free speech is being like, Facebook can silence you. Twitter can silence you. It's crazy, but yet there's people out there saying Israel should be eradicated and their posts are up and they're not banned from Twitter. So people like open your eyes right. and go, because you don't like Donald Trump, get, yeah, great, get him off. Um, what? That's another slippery slope. Like he's the president of the United States and you're going to ban him from from Twitter, but these other people aren't being banned and they're outright saying, 
get rid of Israel is just one um, yeah. one of those things out there. And like, oh, the post got removed after a time, but they're still on Twitter and they can say something again and again. And it's always that first time or two. It doesn't matter. It still went out, you know, for an hour, a week, whatever it was. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But they're not being banned. So, like, who's banning free speech? I see the left doing that. Yeah. So I, I just think it's crazy. People, we need, you know, and they're they're pushing you against the right. I'm in the middle, and I feel like most Americans are really in the middle. Right. We just need the facts, Josh. Well, when most people sit down and talk about this stuff, they realize that quickly, they, for the most part, they agree about the same stuff. Yeah. It's just those that end up running things love to create this division. You know, that whole politics of personal destruction that started in yeah. the 90s. And it's, it yeah. hasn't stopped. I mean, I think... Uh, it's awful. Tom McDonald, I think he's fantastic. Um, yeah, he seems to be a little bit more on the conservative side. But I actually, like my wife said, she's like, I don't know. He reminds me of just... He's like anti-politics um, and the way these the politicians are. I mean, he sings a lot of songs that are just against the establishment more right. so. And he's, he's like, like counterculture. Yeah. I mean, Dirty Money. Um, well, there is a whole bunch of them. Yeah, he's got a lot of... He's um, become really popular really fast. Yeah, and he's doing it without... I mean, he's got a... He's got no record label. Like going, oh, this record company wants me to now... Uh, be on their label. He's doing it all like um, all himself and his family. It's freaking awesome. Like talk about self starter. Talk about being a real entrepreneur. Um, he's doing it himself. Um, I think he's. I forget what he goes. Oh, I have a lot of respect for this person, but I still don't want to be on your label. I forget. It was like I think it was a another rapper that had a label. He's like still uh, thanks. You know, <laughs> I'm flattered kind of thing. But, you know, the system, Dirty Money, I think that's a great song um, about, you know, hey, who's making all the money off of uh, BLM and sponsoring the, you know, like, hey, people, they're making money off of you. They're selling advertisement. Like, hey, news, can you just give us the facts versus the agenda? Oh, you can't because Big Pharma is sponsoring you. You can't speak out against them. Oh, craziness, Josh. I don't know. I, know. I really, you know, I say that a lot. It's I don't all good. Know what we're going to do, but, you know, as a business owner, it's crazy. I'm really in the middle. Yeah. People, it, it, I just it, see I mean, far left agenda. Hey, I'm scared of the far right. Like, you freaking skinhead Nazis. Like, be nice to everybody. You know, it's crazy. So, yeah, hey, I, guys, it's been another episode. Um, we're not solving anything here. Um, vote for John Halleck for president. That will solve something. <laughs> if you want to donate. <laughs> um, <laughs> Josh is going to start. Hey, you still haven't done your job. I said we're going to start a GoFundMe, and you haven't done it. Um, we'll have to probably all give it back to some uh, sponsoring kids. Uh, that's another thing I want to do. Sponsor kids. You know, do a little uh, families can't afford RMSDF. Dot com and do something where parents can sponsor. I, you know, occasionally sponsor some kids uh, myself. So we'd love to have that in there. Or, you know, when I the, I don't get elected president, anything that went into that GoFundMe. Minus what it's going to cost for our social media guy. Shut up, Josh. I'm not wrapping it up. I'm doing my job. All right. Hey, hit clear sky. We've got some new rash guards on Krav Maga-Online, so help support the podcast and I can pay the bills. All right, guys, I am out.